So it used to be if you had a UL like this one right here and you wanted to come in and change the icons on that, you'd have to come in with pseudo elements and then replace the bullet points with the pseudo elements and actually do quite a bit of work to position them in the right spot. And it, it was doable, but it wasn't a lot of fun to necessarily do. Well, no longer. We now have a single selector that lets us do it and it's super easy to do. So let's go and dive in and take a look at what we can do with this. Hi there, my name is Kevin and welcome to my channel where we learn about how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks and tutorials. And that's what we're doing now. We're diving into the CSS. That's what I love. CSS is what this channel is all about. And this is where we're going to be looking at the new or not new. It's been around for a while, but browser support is finally there. It's really good now. Um, it's the marker pseudo element. And so you do it double colon marker just like this. And then you can do things like color red and it will it will change the color of your markers and the marker is literally the bullet point or if you have a numbered list it'd be the color of your numbered list so we come in and we can change it super easily like that uh, red blue green whatever you want it to be you can change it on over now one thing with the marker pseudo element is it has a very limited list of properties that you can actually set properties on uh, color being one of them and that's kind of handy and you can actually take it here if you wanted to is let's just say we do an li hover marker with a nice interesting one there and we say color is red and you could make it so then when you hover on top I don't know why you do this but it's a possibility where this is one of the ones uh, because we can change color you can get interesting like that but all the properties are able to transition so we can actually change the color of let's say one second and I'm not going to this isn't something I would ever do for real but you can see that that's now fading in and fading out and you can you can even set animations on these if you wanted to um, if you wanted like you know a rainbow effect cycling through them for some reason I don't know why but it's it's available to you if you'd want to do that. But I think more interestingly than, than this silly stuff is coming in with custom icons. Cause that was, I mean, just coloring them like this is wonderful. You just set it and actually we should, let's go all out. We're going to set it to var uh, color primary cause I have a custom property. So it's going to match the orange I have everywhere. And if you don't know custom properties, this is, it's a CSS variable effectively. If you've never seen them before, cards should be popping up right now where you can learn a whole heck of a lot more about them. One of my favorite things in CSS. Um, but there we go. We can see they have changed over in their color. They're going to my primary color. And this is where you can also open up some other things. So we could actually do a font size on here of say 2M and they're going to get really big. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But just showing you, you can also change your font size, maybe a 0.5 and make them really tiny. That's kind of interesting, right? And it's all the font properties are pretty much available. So we could actually do a font weight on here. Uh, and make these bad boys bold if we wanted to and they'll probably barely change because the font size is so small but they're not bold bullet points even if they're tiny tiny um so kind of cool over there right that all the font properties are available so that means i could actually change the font family hmm interesting and oh wait but what good is changing the font family for a bullet point i mean can't bullet point to bullet point to bullet point right but Another one of the properties that is available to us is actually the content property. And this might be familiar to you if you know pseudo elements. And if you don't know pseudo elements, please go check this card out right now. Um, it's pseudo elements are the best, but now we don't have to do this with pseudo elements, which is so much easier. Um, so just by coming in and putting content like that, you can see the bullet points have actually disappeared and I could come here and write hello and watch this. Hello is there. And ah, now we can actually see, <laughs> let's, let's put this back up to a, a, the font size so we can see it. And we can turn off my font weight and you'll actually see that the font weight does change. So there we go. I was telling you the truth the whole time here. Uh, so you can play with the font weights. You can play with your content. And that opens up a very interesting avenue where that means, and I'm doing this with Font Awesome just because it's super easy to set up and do with Font Awesome because it's like I go into CodePen here and I can link and just I can literally write Font Awesome and it, it's one of the it's in the list. So that's the reason I'm using Font Awesome here. Uh, but that does mean that I can set the font family family to whoops uh, to uh, it's font awesome awesome five free. And if I do that, that opens up. I have to put a font weight of 700 on here because this is the free fonts. And that is part of using Font Awesome. And then what I can do is on the content, instead of writing hello, which is coming through in this little sans serif right there, I can do a backslash F00C, which I've prepared ahead of time maybe. 
And look at that, we have some check marks. <laughs> Super cool, right? Um, and that's just the the glyph for Font Awesome. And if you want to know, like if you go to Font Awesome, Font Awesome, let's go find it. If you're on Font Awesome, you look for your icons. If ever you are using it, it's super easy to do, right? Uh, so let's just say for some reason we wanted them all to be, we all want them, to, they're all anchors. I don't know why we'd want the anchor. Here is the code for that. So we click it, it's already copied. I just replace it there and now they'll all become anchors. And there we go. So, <laughs> you know, they're super easy, amazingly easy. Um, very similar to when you were doing it with a pseudo element, but the big difference here is with, with the pseudo element, it was more work getting it to be in the right position and getting everything to be perfect. This is just set up and the, like set up with your 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 custom marker here. And actually, I left this as marker. I had my custom marker. Um, if ever you do this and you have like a custom marker, just don't do it like this because it's not going to work. It's not an inherited property, so it won't inherit it from the UL. You would do something like this where it's a marker that's inside of custom marker because the custom marker is always on the LI. So you could write LI custom mar uh, LI marker as well and this would work. Uh, and of course you could do this with like your direct child and you could just do it like this if you wanted to, it's always gonna work. It's a marker that's directly inside of my custom marker there. So you can set it all up like this. Now you will notice one thing is they're really like glued to here and this would depend on the font size. Like I'm assuming if we, if we made these little tiny anchors, we'd probably have a little bit more spacing. Well, they're still kind of stuck. Um, so if you do want more spacing there or more more space, more spacing, it's exactly what it is. Uh, we could do our custom marker li and on those li's we would do a padding. We want This has to be with padding and it's going to be padding left. And let's start with 0.5, that's probably enough. And that's going to add the space there. If you do it with margins, it's going to add the margin on the other side of the marker because it's included in that whole thing. So yeah, it has to be padding margin. It's not going to work the way you want it to. So a little bit of padding to give you the space. And then you set up your custom markers. And whether you're just changing the color or you're coming in with custom icons or you're doing something else, whatever it is. And this content property, like you could throw an SVG on this, right? So like I'm doing this with Font Awesome because it took me five seconds to set up. Uh, but if this was a project where you had SVG icons, like you can throw an SVG in on the content property and it works. So there's a lot of different possibilities here, a lot of really cool things that you could do. So I would just say take this and run with it and experiment with it. Now, if you like this idea of learning more about some cool, fun stuff with CSS, I would suggest checking out this video right here. I think you'd really enjoy that one as well. And with that, a really big thank you for watching. A massive thank you to Zach, who is my supporter of Awesome, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. Thank you guys so very much. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.